Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Coach Rock here, and in today's video, we're going to be working on how to master playing out of the pick and roll. If you're a point guard, this is key, but nowadays, all players are using the pick and roll. Even you got big men playing out of the pick and roll because the game has evolved so much. But definitely, if you're a smaller player, you need to know how to use the pick and roll. As you get to the next level, high school, college, nine times out of ten, you're going to be doing something out of a pick and roll. So here's a little drill that will show you a different variations or different options that you'll have out of the pick and roll. So the more you work on it, the better you'll be when it comes time to really use it in real games. So the first thing we need to realize is that every pick and roll, we have to set our defender up, right? A lot of times, like let's say big men, they get in trouble in pick and rolls because the guard's fault for not being patient. Because if a big man's trying to set a pick for you and you go too fast and he's still moving while he does a pick, then he's going to get the offensive foul. So if you're a guard, you need to take your time, let your big man get set, set up your guy to be in the perfect angle to, so you can use that pick properly. Guys like Chris Paul is great at this because he plays at such a great pace. And I mean, he's just, just watch how Chris Paul uses the pick and roll. Um, watch old footage of Steve Nash. Watch how he set up the pick and roll. It's not about being the fastest player. Neither of those guys were the fastest players. But because they knew how to play at their own pace, change speeds, they're very tough to guard straight up, let alone when you have to defend them out of the pick and roll. So the first thing is we have to set up the pick and roll. So this drill, every time you, you attack, the first cone that's closest to me, that's our pick, all right? The other cone is going to be the, the help defense. So it's the defender that is pretty much guarding our guy. So he's going to try to, a lot of times big men will switch, um, and that's where opportunities can come. So every time, though, we need to, I can't just come here and use the pick and roll like this, right? I have to set my defender up. So a lot of times you want to bring your defender in line with the pick and roll. Okay, so if my guy's setting a pick for me here, I'm pretty much in line. So you want to attack. If your defender doesn't st stay with you, you can blow by him and get to the rim. So you want to keep him honest. He's going to try to stop you from there. You stop here, and now you're attacking as close as you can to this pick. Now, and now, of course, we don't have a guy here, but in reality, you would want to be like tight on the body. Your shoulder would want to be, depending how tall your player is, around his like waist area. And you would want to be touching him so that your defender can't squeeze through. You don't want your defender to be able to go through this pick here. So that's the first aspect, is setting up the pick. That's like the most important thing. So I know it seems boring probably, like, oh, you're explaining too much. Just show the move. But first you have to set up the pick properly. So here, boom. OK, what's the first option? First option, right, is we attack. The pick works. The help defense, it gets a little too far out. He's trying to, he's trying to stop. He's trying to hedge is what they call it to slow us down. And we're splitting here. So if you ever see guys like Kyrie, Chris Paul, when they split the pick, this is what's happening. So they're attacking here. But you have to make it look like you're going because if the defender doesn't hedge far enough, we're getting around. We have a wide open lane where they'll have to help and we'll be able to kick to other defender, I mean to our other teammates. Or we can hit a floater or we can get to the basket. So that the help defense is going to be trying, I mean not the help, but the hedger, he's going to be trying his hardest to stop you from getting around. He's either going to have to switch or he's going to have to stop you long enough for your defender to come back, all right? So a lot of times he's going to get out of position here, you attacking, and then I'm splitting like that. And then you'll probably have a good pull up here, floater, or you might be able to get to the rim for the finish. So that's the first one we're working on. So again, here, setting up the pick, getting there, and doing, doing what we got to do to score. OK. So next option, next option is your defender. He's trying his hardest now to get over this pick. So if, if 
let's say my man's there and I'm playing defense, I'm the defender. If he sees this pick, he's trying to like get over the pick. So what does that give you the opportunity to do? It allows you to reject the screen. Boom. Here, reject it. Get into this open gap right here for another shot. So second option here, we're boom, going this way. Now notice how I changed, notice the pace. Okay, I'm not just going like this. Okay, now you could do that sometimes, but it's smarter, play with a good pace, see what happens. There's a lot of different things you can do, but you're gonna be much more effective if you play with that pace. Boom, here, either way you go, you want to start playing with pace. Now, next option, the obvious one. The pick comes, your man says, screw that. I'm going behind so I can get out here. So what are you going to do? It should be automatic. Anytime your man goes behind the screen, you have to shoot. If not, the whole pick and roll game gets destroyed if you're not a threat from out here. So it's an automatic cue. If your man goes behind the screen, you have to shoot. So if I attack here, boom, my man goes behind, I have to shoot. And one good thing is you'll usually see your man going behind because the better you set up the pick, the more opportunities it's going to give you. So what I'm saying is if I attack hard here and I'm here and my defender ends up, oh, snap. If I kind of yank him a little, now he sees me attacking the pick, there's no way he can get in front of it. So he has to go behind it. So because of that, because I see that, I don't have to come so tight around on the defender because my defender's way over there. So instead of doing that, that's why on this option, I'm a little further out. I see him way back there and I'm shooting, all right? Now the last option we'll work on today is what happens a lot of times, there's a switch. So the big man has to guard you. That's, that's easy money if you're, if you're good, if you're a good guard, you should have no problem with that. So we're here. So let's say, boom, we set it up, good pick. They yell, switch, switch. So what we're doing here, as fast as we can, we're bouncing out. Why? Because we don't want the, the big man to be able to switch back. So we're trying to get as far away from the, our player, our regular defender as we can. So I'm here, boom, switch, switch. Now you're out here. Now the, defense, now the big man is stuck guarding you. Now you can blow by him. You can pull up for the three, pull up for the mid range. A lot of things you can do. There should be no reason why a big man should be able to guard you out here. So we're here, attacking, boom. Attack, we hear switch. We're getting out. Now you have the mismatch. So of course, when you're working on this, you also want to set up this same drill in different areas on the court. Try to put it where you think or where you know your team runs pick and rolls for you. So automatically I would do both wings. I would do at the top of the key. Very rarely are you going to get a pick and, a, pick and roll in the corner. Although sometimes coaches might isolate a two-man game with you and the big man and you might be a little further over here. So the beauty is once you master this, it doesn't matter where you're at on the court, you're gonna know what to do. The main things to remember are tight, off the pick. If your defender gets trapped on the pick, you can split. Cause the help, the hedge guy, he's gonna be trying to do this, right? This is, this is what they wanna do. The big guy wants to just step here and allow his man to come back he doesn't want to guard you, so that opens the opportunity for the split. Or you can fake, you can um, reject the screen, or 
your man goes behind, automatic shoot the shot, or you get the switch, you create space, and you go to work against the big man. If you found this video helpful and you're looking to take your game to the next level, check out our free training where I'm gonna show you my three biggest secrets to become a great scorer in real games. All you have to do is go to the comments, click the link I have pinned there, or go to revengebasketball.com slash YouTube, and that'll take you there. You can read it all about it and definitely use those tips to improve your game. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up for me. Comment below, let me know what else you wanna see. Anything, you know I got you. Last but not least, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Let's get the channel to 100K subs. Until next time, I'll see you then.